Welcome back to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. There seems to be a wind of change that is blowing from Mount Kenya. And the leaders from that side are under intense pressure over levies and taxes on farmers and their continued protection on William Samuel Ruto when things are not working for them. In less than one week, Rigetiga Shagwa rushed to Kameme FM, begged Mamangina to forgive him for the sins of omission and commission that he committed against the first family. Ndindi Nyoro, of all the people, while attending some church services, warned an imaginary figure, I don't know whom he was warning, of careless in increase of uh, taxes and levies on Kenyans. And people are asking, we thought that Nindi Nyoro is the deep state, they are the government themselves. Rigedi Gashagwa, on realizing that his farmers are now lamenting over the avocado levies, decided to confront that means, and he has created a task force to look into exactly what is ailing the avocado farmers. This is happening against a backdrop of very many leaders, leaders like Gaduna Mushomba telling Rigade and all the other leaders that instead of hiding there under the guise of looking at problems bedeviling your farmers, bring the bill back to parliament so that we can debate upon it. Ladies and gentlemen, today, Rigedi Gashagwa warned, and he was warning another imaginary figure, I don't know. And he was telling farmers that moving forward, that moving forward, they will not increase levies and taxes on people unless they consult, unless they engage Kenyans themselves. Can you take a look? I look at regarding Shagwa. There will be no further increase on taxation and levies without discussion. Okay. Then ile maneno mingi bumeris tumeweka mkuta. Ladies and gentlemen, you will agree with me that that is an admission that they have levied taxes on people without consulting them. And I remember during the finance bill 2023, one of the reasons why people rejected this, it was because of uh, lack of, of consultation. And even after consultation, everyone who went there, every stakeholder told the government that this bill is wrong, it is ill-timed, Kenyans are ready to pay taxes, but not now. But they overruled and ignored the opinions of Kenyans. Now, in the Kenyan language, kinawaramba. Because the opposition that went to the streets to try and force the government to, you know, to retract its steps decided to hold. And the propaganda is no longer selling. In fact, when people look at their businesses, those people who are told that Traila just wanted to kill their businesses by going to the streets, are now realizing all of a sudden that Raila meant well for them. Because just the other day, Edwin Sifuna told Rigadi that we were going to the streets with Sufurias on our, on, on our heads to fight against the Finance Bill 2023 that contained all these taxes. Now, it's very ironical that it is not farmers or members from the opposition side that are crying, but the very, very people from the side of the government. The government passed these, these amendments with a lot of pride and enthusiasm, and they even told off the opposition that you don't have the numbers. But why the sudden change? Why the U-turn? Because I didn't expect Nindi Nyoro of all the people to start telling us that they 
don't agree with this increment of, of, of taxes. And when Gashago is telling people that moving forward, they will not increase taxes without consultation, let me ask you, who is he referring to? He's the second in command. And so the only person above regarding Gashago is William Ruto. Is Gashago telling William Ruto that he has been imposing taxes on people without consultation? Mary Wamawa told us that they did not even read the contents of the Finance Bill 2023. What does it mean? They were cajoled or hoodwinked or they just neglected and negated their duties as parliamentarians. The wind of change that I'm talking about is one that is inevitable because the blame game is no longer working. Rigeti Shagwa has pronounced himself as the ultimate and undisputed kingpin. Yet farmers are crying. Now, in a bid to appear as if he's fighting for them, he has decided, I want to commit myself that this will not happen again. But does he mean it? It is because of the pressure from the people. And they are asking, where are you when we are suffering? Where are you when our land is going as a result of the housing levy? Where are you when the government that you serve continues to levy taxes on us? And so it is the pressure. They understand that 2027 might not be a walk in the park because people will sit down and they will start reflecting on what has happened over the years, all the promises. And I was shocked when one of the members of parliament from Central was saying that William Ruto has delivered 80% of the promises that he gave. What a lucky lot they are. In less than two years, William Ruto has delivered 80%. So what is he telling us? In the next maybe one year, William Ruto will deliver the other 20%. Because if in less than two years he has delivered 80%, then the 20% that is remaining will only be delivered in the next, in less than one year. And so what these people are telling William Ruto is that maybe from 2023, 2025, if William Ruto decides to now embark on de developing other regions, they will not cry fall because they have confessed that William Ruto has achieved 80%. And this is very disastrous because from where I sit, William Ruto has not even delivered 10% of the promises he gave to the mountain. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been crying like this. Together, the struggle wouldn't have been going, moving from one place to the other, condemning the taxes and creating ta uh, you know, the task forces. It doesn't work that way. Why is Rigedi Shagwa not just being honest, instruct their members of parliament to debate this? They can bring an amendment so that they reverse the articles that they feel do not aga well with their farmers. And how will this impact on others? Because I remember Members of Parliament from Rift Valley had warned it's either free lunch for all of us or we pay. That was the message to Rigedi Gashagwa that you cannot be speaking for your people. And Rigedi Gashagwa is under pressure to start behaving like a national leader and not behaving like some village champion. When something is happening and the other Kenyans are suffering, he's quiet. But when it seems to, to, to touch on members of Mount Kenya, He's there filming with fury. But even this, experts feel that he is only but deceiving Mount Kenya because he knew very well the contents of the Finance Bill 2023. He knew very well that imposing taxes would impact negatively on the farmers. Yet, he instructed their leaders, their members of parliament, and they passed all this. Now he's coming back, a typical politician. And I'm sure he knows very, what, very well what he's doing. What if the rec recommendations of the task forces will come that we must now look at the articles in the finance bill that are ailing our farmers and we debate them? What will happen? Do you think they will take it back to, to, to parliament? And how will Ruto take that? What will happen? I'm thinking that Gedi Gashagwa is indirectly confronting William Samoy Ruto because he has just, you know, realized that they made a mistake. It is like they have just resurfaced from the moon and they are realizing that the economic situation is very dire. 
the farmers depend you know solely on their farming businesses yet they are now living taxes they rushed and you see they had misplaced priority even the motive behind passing this was to show the opposition to show Raila that you don't have the numbers they, they did not realize that after the passage of the bill life has to move on and that is when reality downed on them and this wind of change when you see people like Ndindi Nyoro beginning to warn then it is inevitable it reminds me of the of Anwaiguru who said you can only rent a kikuyu but you cannot buy a kikuyu very soon William Ruto will face this and he will know whether he rented them or he bought them things are getting thicker because you know if you ask experts they will tell you why they are still asking why did Ndindi Nyoro why is Rigedi Geshagwa and in fact this has forced William Ruto to start fighting back the other day he sent a member of parliament that member of parliament from Molo Kimani who was saying that he understood he read and understood the finance bill 2023 there is nothing like avocado levy and this tells you that William Ruto has realized that Rigadi pushes uh, you know poses some danger to him because it is going to be turned against him Mount Kenya must just decide that we didn't read it we are sorry it was pushed down our throat by William Samuel Ruto so we are ready to debate it. How will William Ruto take it? And so, ladies and gentlemen, this is a direct confrontation with his boss. Otherwise, I don't understand why Rigedi Keshago is busy forming and creating task forces to look into something that they themselves passed overwhelmingly. It is common now, Kenyans say, that we will be there no matter what. We are keenly watching what is transpiring because Mount Kenya will soon revolt. I know William Ruto knows very well that he simply goes there with just one propaganda and they are all in the basket. But from the way things are moving, I don't think it's going to be easy because we even have songs that have been composed. It is no longer Hatupangwingwi. In fact, Wanapangwa Sai, the hustlers, the Mamambogas, when we realize Wanapangwa. Let me end by saying this. Amidst all this fracas, let them remember that parliament, the Simpson parliament, passed the reintroduction of the CAS. Chief administrative secretaries. And this time round, there is no limit. William Ruto can appoint as many as 300. And there's nothing they will do. And that means because from my earlier analysis, one CAS is taking home over 700,000, 780,000 Kenya shillings. And that means more, more value added taxes because there is no way William Ruto is going to get money to pay all these bodies that he is appointing into offices. So brace yourself for even more tough times. Let no one deceive us that they are creating task forces. William Ruto is increasing the wage bill. William Ruto is increasing the cabinet and this cabinet must be maintained by taxpayers' money, their drivers, their guzzlers, fuel guzzlers, their house allowances, their security and secretaries. And so this fallacy must stop. There is nothing like a task force. It will not achieve anything. If these people are serious, let them go back to parliament. And very soon, we are going to witness a very great confrontation between the president and the deputy, Hunda Amechoka.